is Rue with the King's Roost. As you can see, the store is finally open. We're located here at the corner of Fountain and Talmadge in Los Angeles. Come and visit us. We're open every day except Monday. Love to see you. Every Tuesday, I'll be bringing you our featured DIY project of the week. This week, I'm going to show you how to put together and assemble one of these indoor aquaponics systems. We have four different models. They come in various colors. And this one has a reservoir for fish and a grow bed for growing aquaponic vegetables, flowers, herbs, lettuce, kale, whatever you want to put in it. First of all, you've got your grow media, which are the pebbles that you saw earlier that the plants are going to sit in. I'm going to say one thing about the grow media. This stuff is kind of dusty. So, and I've done this for you already here so that we don't have to waste time in the video. But what I would suggest is when you first get this bag out, don't handle it too much because the dust comes out. Poke a bunch of holes in the bottom, not too big. Use a pair of scissors or a screwdriver. Gently poke a bunch of holes in the bottom to make the holes bigger. Cut a slit in the top and get a bucket and set it in there. And just take your garden hose and rinse it really, really well. And what you'll find is after a couple of thorough rinsing, thorough rinses in the bucket, it'll, the water will run clear and it'll be ready to go. Okay, the first thing we're going to start with is the pump. The pump is pretty easy to put together. The instructions are in the container. They give you step-by-step -step directions. My 11-year-old son puts these together for me here in the store, so it's pretty straightforward. But we'll go through this real quick, and you'll see how easy it is. First thing you want to do is take the pump out, pull off the cover, and inside is a little foam filter that you don't need because the aquaponics system is a self-filtering system. There is an adjustable dial here, I guess, a switch, push it down to the smallest, to the ne most negative uh, setting, and that will give it the lowest flow to start with. Next, you're going to take this little valve plus one O-ring and discard the rest. Pop this O-ring inside and screw this valve right on to the pump, making sure not to cross the threads. There we go. Then, your air tube, pop the air tube right onto the end, and that's the pump assembly done. Okay, now that the pump is uh, pretty much ready, we're going to set this in here just for now. We'll come back to it in a second. You're going to take your reservoir, which is the larger of the two containers, set the pump right in the bottom, and hook the cord over the little notch that's right there. Next, you're going to get the plate. It is the connecting plate and four screws, the four screws that come with the kit. And what I like to do is just set the screws, just put them into the pre-drilled holes right here on the side. Just set them in, screw them in a little bit. And then line up the plate with the screw holes that are already there, so it's all pretty straightforward. So the way it connects is that you have this little notch here that makes room for the cord and um, it really only fits in one way. You're going to find two holes here and two holes here. You just line those up. And let's see. We'll line these in and then let's see how this goes. One. Two. Three. Nice and solid. You want to make sure it's tight enough that this isn't wiggling. And this is what you're going to attach the grow bed to in a minute. First thing, before we do that, the next step is to connect up the pump. And you're going to do that with, well, the first thing is actually you're going to connect up the Venturi tube, which is what this is. Hold this up. Just place this right up here underneath. And there's a little notch in your plate here to attach this zip tie. So you're just going to slide this in, curve the other end around. The object of the game here is to keep this little air intake tube above the water level that is going to be in the tank later. So really just, I like to just have it sitting flush and flat. Pull that nice and tight, but not too tight. You don't want to restrict any airflow. Just there to hold it in place. Okay, next we're going to attach the tubing for, well, we're going to attach the tubing for the pump here. This is this, this little extra bit of tubing. We'll just set that on right now and attach that to the, to the pump. So 
We're basically done with the pump. So the next step is to assemble your grow bed. You're ready to put the grow bed on top. First thing, you want to clip off the, any excess zip tie. Let me take that off and just tuck that under so that nothing here interferes with the grow bed resting right on top there. So the next thing we're going to do to attach the grow bed, it actually connects with this bulkhead gasket thingamajig. There are four parts to this. One is the little washer that holds it on. The next is a gasket to keep it sealed. And the last part is a little filter to keep things from falling back through and getting clogged up in the system. So we're going to screw this part on and then make sure that the gasket is set right in there. This part comes in just a minute. I'm going to set this aside. So what you're going to do next, you'll notice the top of the grow bed. If you look through the top, you're going to see that there's a hole in the bottom. What you're going to do is set your uh, bulkhead assembly with the point straight down into there. Make sure it goes on. Let me push that in. So there we go. It was a little sticky there. Then that bottom part now is going to line up and go straight into that hole. So you just set that in there and push that in. So here we have, now it's starting to look like a hydroponic aquaponic system. Okay, so to attach it, you just take that gasket or that, that washer and screw it in. It's a little hard to see, but it's pretty easy to do by feel. Unless you're being filmed. There we go. And just slide it on, tighten it all up. Just finger tight should be good enough. If you get a little bit of leakage, it's not going to be the end of the world. Because if the water leaks from here, it's only going to go right back into the reservoir. And then make sure that this, this end is lined up nice and straight. You can still twist it a little bit if you would need to adjust it. And when it's nicely lined up, give it one more tighten to keep it nice and firm and solidly in place so it doesn't move later on. The last step here underneath is to connect your pump to that little nipple, that little uh, barbed, barbed nipple that was underneath the bulkhead gasket. I just jam that right on there so it's nice and snug and the pump can just sit in the bottom there. So I think we're ready to add water. At this point, I would recommend putting the aquaponic system basically where it's going to end up because once you add water, it gets a little bit heavy. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to add water. Now, if you have filtered water, that's ideal. The system does come with dechlorinator to make sure that you um, don't put chlorinated water in there or you can get the chlorine and any chloramines that might be in the water out before you put fish in. So this is filtered water, but I'm also going to treat it with dechlor just to be extra safe for the fish. Fill it up enough to submerge the pump, because we are going to test the pump operation first. We're going to plug it in. Whatever you do, don't plug it in too early. You do not want to have the pump running without any water. That will burn it out pretty quickly, so you don't want to do that. If you look inside the top here, as it fills, you see the pump is pushing water up through this bulkhead gasket, and that tube is sucking some air, and it's called a venturi tube, and it's providing some additional aeration. So water and bubbles are being pumped up from the bottom, and that is perfect. This is working exactly right, right out of the box. If for some reason you need uh, to adjust the airflow in the tube, that little dial that was attached underneath, you can reach under and kind of try and open it up a little bit. It's impossible to see now that it's attached, but it's there. And you can see it's working. The water is flowing up, and it's overflowing through the waterfall, and everything is looking really good. Now that we've verified that the pump is working and everything is in order, I've topped it up with water up to a level, uh, about two inches from the top. Um, you want to fill it you know, with lots of water. The more water, the better for the fish. But if you put too much water in, you want to leave a little bit of space because if the power goes out, any water in the top grow, grow bed will uh, settle back down into the bottom tank. So you want to leave a little space for overflow. If you top this right up to the top, 
then when the power goes out, the water in here will cause it to overflow. So leave a little bit of space. Next thing we want to do is just for safety, even though I'm already using filtered water, I'm pretty comfortable that there's no chlorine or chloramines in it. But just to show you, I'm going to put some dechlorine. It's a vitamin C, um, and it binds to the chlorine and the thoramines. And you need about a half a teaspoon because we've got about a five gallon system here. It is not toxic, and everything we sell here is safe for use in aquaponic systems. The next thing is there is, you'll find a little bag of oyster shells. This is a buffer, helps maintain the proper pH. Just drop it in there, never have to think about it again. Next is your beneficial bacteria. The heart and soul of an aquaponic system is the fact that you have, art of, you have be beneficial bacteria processing all of your fish waste into a form that the plants can use. So it's very important to have your beneficial bacteria colony well established. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open this bottle up, and I'm going to put about half the bottle in to get started. That'll help get everything cycled. Finally, the last ingredient is going to be your seaweed, and this provides some added nutrients to help get the fish and the plants, mostly the plants, nicely established. So I'm going to mix up, what you're going to do is mix up a teaspoon of this in a cup of water, dissolve it, and pour it into your system. We'll actually do that last. So now it's time for the grow media. And now for the fun part. This is the part where it really starts to look like an aquaponic system. We're going to pour the grow media into the top grow bed. Again, I've pre-rinsed this. Just pour them in. These are expanded clay pellets that provide a substrate for and a, a substrate to support the plants. So this is very much it's same same kind of stuff that's used in hydroponic growing, which is growing without soil. And you're going to fill it all the way up, pretty much to the top. Leave a little space because you're going to want to move them around a little bit when the plants go in. Since this was filled with water, they tend to float sometimes. So just you don't have to pack them down, but just make sure they fill in all the empty, empty spaces. Pour in the seaweed. That's the last ingredient. The seaweed is a seaweed nutrient. That's the packet I showed you earlier. You're going to take a quarter teaspoon, dissolve it in a cup of water that you just take from here, and then just dump it in. And you can rinse that cup out like that. Your water is going to look like coffee for a few days, and that's totally normal. And in about two or three days, you're ready to put your fish in the bottom reservoir and your plants in the top reservoir. Okay, so for our first plant, I'm going to put this radicchio in, and I'm going to put it right here on the far left. The first thing you're going to need to do is remove all of the excess soil from the pot. So I'm going to remove this, and I'm just going to dunk it in the water and just mush it around very gently. Just break up the roots a little bit. That helps spread them out. And all I'm doing underneath the water here is just giving it a gentle squeeze and you can see all that soil coming off the root ball. Okay, so it looks like I've got most of the stuff, most of the soil off of this root ball. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set it in here. I'm just going to dig this Take these out of the way, set the base of the root ball in so that as you can see the top of it will be around the top level of the planter. And we'll, we're just going to bury the root ball in the grow media. Give it lots of support. Pile them up all the way around it. There we have our first plant. And now the grow bed's ready for the next one. There we have it.